Rafa, nine months on from your departure from Everton, how do you reflect on that period? I think it was an enrichment experience. So uh, it was a shame at the same time because I think that we could improve uh, everything in terms of um, with the experience that we have now, in terms of uh, staff, or in terms of uh, departments, or uh, squad things like that. I think we could we could help to improve things. But I say it was a nice time in terms of experience and uh, a shame at the same time. You talked about it being a project. Was there a lack of patience? Do you think you would have brought success to Everton had you been given the time? Everything has to be analysed depending on the, the targets that you have and the tools that you have. So when we go to a, a new club, whatever it is, it doesn't matter where, in any country uh, or here in the Premier League, you go there, you need to know the environment, you need to know the board, you need to know the squad, you need to know the young players, the academy, the injuries that they have had, every single department. So it's what we were trying to do when they talk about projects. So you need to know exactly what is going on there and where they want to go. So what they were telling me, obviously, so we want to improve the 10th position, blah, blah, but after we don't have the money. So the reality is the project finished when we finished the window with 1.7 million spent. So that was five players, and spending 1.7 million when they were spending around 600 million at this time. It was a little bit uh, strange. Still, we were working hard, we were doing really well. If you remember at the beginning, we were winning, we were playing nice football, the fans, they loved this uh, style. We knew, because we knew the environment, I live here, that we needed wingers and we needed more positions, but we didn't have the resources to do it. And we brought wingers, uh, the best players, Craig Townsend, they were doing fantastic at the beginning. The team was playing well, and then we had the injuries. So the projects change when you don't have a clear idea, the resources that you have to, to achieve your target, and after when you have some issues like we had uh, in injuries, that it was not injuries that you were expecting. We, we knew that they had problems with injuries in the past. And we were analysing the squad, and we were making some decisions depending on that, to be sure that we have less players that they could get injured. But Richardson with a knee, um, Calvin Lewin with a problem after an injury with his toe, and um, uh, Ducure with his metatarsal. So they were things that you were not expecting, plus Jeremina, that normally he has some issues. Then we lost the spine of the team, and that was the, when everything was changing and the project finished. Do you have any regrets about taking the job? I think, I would say, you have to analyse the context. At the time that um, they came with the, with the offer, I knew, and you say, OK, you were um, at Liverpool and then it would be a problem, but I have a lot of friends that they are blues, and yesterday, yesterday I have one, and two days ago I have another one. And they say, oh, sorry, it didn't go well, but uh, they knew that I will give everything trying to, to do my best and to improve the things. So I knew that. I knew that it could be more or less difficult, but because I was red, maybe I couldn't make some decisions. That it was very clear for us from the beginning. I had a meeting with um, a head of one of the departments at the beginning, and then I was asking him, do you think that everything is fine? He said, yeah, yeah, everything is perfect. 600 million spent cannot be perfect, no? It's something when the owners are not happy and the fans are not happy, cannot be perfect. So I, was, I realized that uh, you have to change things inside but I couldn't do it, do it straight away because I was red and could be seen like, oh, you know, he's coming to change our club. So that is the only thing. In another club, I will, I will make these decisions, and I did it in the past because uh, you know it's very clear that that is the way to improve. But uh, there in Everton, I couldn't do it. How much time do you spend reflecting on a job when you leave? You're a vastly experienced manager. Do you take a lot of time to reflect on what went right? What went wrong? Are you constantly learning? Yeah, that is part of the process. That uh, if you want to improve in your in your jobs in your profession, you have to to be sure that you analyze if you have made mistakes or not. In this case, there are two or three things that I knew that I couldn't do it because it could be seen like a, uh, quite negative at this time. But uh, yeah, we analyze. I watch games all the time, but I don't watch games. So when I sit down uh, with my family watching a game. 
that, oh, I know the game, but I am not watching the game, I'm analyzing the game, the majority of them. Why? Because that is my job. My job is to be sure that they, I know if they play four at the back, three at the back, if they play short, if they play long, if they play counter-attack or things like that. And then I try to, to learn and then I could hear some interviews. I can read some uh, interviews with different coaches, new coaches, uh, new managers. You have to be always uh, open-minded and trying to, to improve and trying to learn. Are you already preparing for your next job then? Yeah, I was preparing my next job uh, two weeks after because... Uh, I have experience on, on football to know that sometimes it's just uh, the perception from outside, but uh, inside you know that, OK, we're doing this, that, but the next challenge will be uh, something different. And what we do, it, my staff is still working, so they are watching games, they are taking notes, they pass information about players, about systems. I was working with Kama uh, Sport, it's a new company in Italy. They, they manage a lot of uh, data. So these big, big data companies that are around the world, so we have been in contact with a lot of them. So this one, uh, Kama Sport, it's uh, interesting because I was doing an analysis of uh, when you play from the back, short from the back, using the keeper, you know, with the new rules and the new style. style. And then they are doing also uh, that with me. So that is an interesting thing, how things are, have, have changed because it was the new rule and the COVID later on. So then you have situation that uh, you play from the back with the keeper, but also you don't have uh, fans. And the fans will be happy if you are playing with your full back all the time, uh, or your centre back in the CJ box and giving the ball away. So these kind of things, uh, we are analysing that. And then I can tell you that the, the percentage of um, goals scored when you play from the back with the keeper is 1.9 or 1.09 or something like that. So it's, and the risk that you have is around 12%. So and when you put all these things together with the experience that you have, you analyze it, mm, something is wrong here. Because uh, you can play football, you can keep the ball, but uh, you don't need to risk every single time. And I will give you the example of PSG, that they were desperate to win the Champions League and they get the ball away in the Serie box. And they lost against Real Madrid. But uh, Napoli or Inter or Leipzig, they have similar problems. And if you put everything uh, there in the context, you have to think about carefully. One thing is to play the ball, that is fine. So we have to try to keep the ball as much as we can and to create. When we were in Liverpool and we were pushing, one of the things that I was saying to my players, sustain the attack. So you have to be on top of them, you have to regain the ball quickly and you have to keep the, the, the other team under pressure. But when you are in another level, then you have to play in another way. So I think it's important to keep the ball but not to risk the ball all the time. I find this fascinating because even with your level of experience, it's clear that you're looking to evolve, to improve, to get better, to learn all the time. Yeah, what I like to do, I, I, yesterday I have a meeting with a young manager and tomorrow I'm telling you I will have a meeting with another young manager because that is really important for me when you pass your experience to them. They are really pleased, but at the same time you are learning from them. So now with social media, the way that you communicate, how you uh, talk with players, so all these kind of things, you need to be uh, updated. And then I have my own software and I am working with these companies, trying to be sure that I know what is going on. But I'm telling you, experience is the key. So we can talk about when I was a young manager, I was not considering the experience of uh, Del Bosque that was uh, the coordinator in the academy or things like that. But after you realize that you make less mistakes when you have experience. And the experience allows you to analyze things in a better way. Because when you talk about technology, big data, blah, blah, everybody has access to the big data now. Everybody can see the stars and how many crosses, how many asses, how many goals, blah, 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 all. but you have to analyze that. And that is the difficult thing, is you need an expert. So you can see, if I, I can now see an interview, I would say, I like the interview or not. You will analyze the interview. And your expert will say, mm, the light is here, the microphone is there, it, it was, uh, the position of the table was wrong. So these are the kind of things that uh, people, they don't realize, and we have to see that and we have to learn from that. But you need to be an expert. It's not that uh, a new manager will go straight. It will be 1%, 1% of the managers, 5% of the, of the managers, that uh, they are young managers, and, and I was one of them. But I can see the majority of the, um, of the winners manage with experience. Why? Because if you need an operation, and a serious operation, 
You go to a surgeon with experience. You don't go to the new surgeon with blah, blah, blah. So then, if you are desperate, then maybe you take any chance with anyone. But if you have time and you are clever enough, you say, okay, this is the one that has 1,000 operations, this is the one for me. That is the same. When uh, someone needs a manager, it's fine to have, oh, the young manager, blah, blah, blah. But the reality is that the experience is making the difference. Experience and balance, when you have your team and you keep the balance, not just attacking or defending, balance. Balance and experience means success.